YouTube in a second. All right. Setting up your webinar for YouTube Live. <laughs> okay. All right. Welcome, Brett. Thank you so much for volunteering to host this session or present um, on the University of Rochester. I see, I see our students pouring in and parents. Last time I said just students and somebody reminded me and parents. <laughs> so students and parents coming in. <laughs> so, um, so Brett, um, you know, while we wait on them, tell us a little bit about Rochester. I, I love the picture in your background. Oh, thank you so much. Um, yeah, so welcome everyone. Thank you so much for having us. Um, really excited to be here. Um, but yeah, Rochester right now, um, you know, it would look like this as it does in my background if it was not raining all day today. Um, and so it's quite the opposite, but normally, you know, it really does look exactly like this kind of photo at this time of year. Um, so, you know, when we get that enjoyable weather, but you know, it doesn't always work in our favor at this time of the year. We never know what, quite what to expect. Okay, we're actually just coming out of hurricane season here, so. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're familiar with the rain. <laughs> right. Actually, we get torrential downpours. Um, <laughs> but right. so far, so far, bright sunny skies today, knock on wood. <laughs> oh, lovely. I would, I would just love to just snap my fingers and just be right there. <laughs> I could just hop on a plane, you know, just right. a couple right. hours, few hours I mean, away. <laughs> are flying cars are like a thing yet? Like, oh, let's, let's just go. <laughs> Okay, awesome stuff. All right, so students are still coming in. So guys, just a reminder, drop your questions in the Q&A and we will field your questions after the presentation. Um, also, just to remind you to sign up for the, the rest of our webinars this week. Let me drop the link in the chat. And yeah, I, I, I think we can start... What do you say? Give them another minute, Brett? Sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. So in the meantime, if there are any burning questions, you know, about University of Rochester, we can we can look at your questions now. So if you have any questions, guys, drop them in the Q&A. I see some familiar faces or familiar names from our previous webinar. Fantastic. All right, quiet room. Okay. All right. So I guess I guess they'll I guess they'll they'll start writing their questions down during the presentation. Sure, no problem. All right. All right. So it's now two o four by my watch. Okay, where is this school? Which state? Very good question. Oh, that is very important. Um, we are located in uh, New York State. So great state of New York. Um, sorry, I'm trying to get my PowerPoint to like work here for a second. There we go. Um, so we are in Western New York and uh, love it here. Um, it is beautiful at this time of the year. So, you know, everything is just, you know, beautiful, vibrant, um, but we're about five and a half hours from New York City. So if you're thinking of like the big apple, we are not quite there. <laughs> we are, we are a little ways away, um, but uh, yeah, the Finger Lakes region of the state, uh, very, actually we're closer to Toronto than um, any major city except for maybe Buffalo. So uh, very close to Canada and our friends there. So it's a cool place to be. Nice. So you get all four seasons? We do. We oh, do. Wow. And really, I mean, really, it's kind of like winter is almost like two seasons mm -hmm. <laughs> in Rochester. Um, not to say it snows that whole time, but, you know, it does get chilly uh, starting, you know, October and into April almost really. Um, but, uh, so we have a pretty short, I would say a pretty short spring and fall, um, summer gets quite hot here. So we do get that, um, which is nice. That's awesome. Okay. So before we start, we have a quick question, um, by Kayano. 
Um, good afternoon. Does Rochester offer a joint um, bachelor's and MD program? We do. Yes. Uh, great question. So it is called our REMS program, which is Rochester Early Medical Scholars. Um, unfortunately, the deadline for that has passed um, at this point. Um, so, you know, typically that is the longest application process for, for us. So, um, you know, that, that passed already um, for, for fall 2022. But if there's anybody out there, you know, interested in uh, medical school, maybe you're not quite a senior yet, or you have a little time, um, you know, you can certainly look into that. It is a four plus four. We have our own medical school. It's really fantastic. Um, and even if you don't um, go into the REMS program, you can still study, um, you know, pre-med track courses um, and work very closely with our, um, our medical center, which has a whole host of affiliated hospitals. Uh, so really exciting. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Okay, so Kiana, we're going to field questions at the end of Brett's presentation. So, you know, save your questions until then, please, my friend. All right, so with that being said, Brett, take it away. Hey, thank you so much. So welcome everyone. Thank you very much for being here today um, and allowing me to speak to you. I hope that you are well. And I know that hurricane season we were just talking about just ended. So I hope that you're fine. Uh, you know, no damage. I hope everybody is, is doing great um, and that everyone's safe with the pandemic as it continues to just sort of batter everyone around. Um, so uh, my name is Brett Cam and I'm the Assistant Director for International Admissions here at Rochester. Um, and uh, so it's yeah, really my privilege to be here with you today. Um, International Education Week is always super exciting. Um, this is really what I dedicated my life to, um, you know, making sure that we have this rich diversity and, and just can have students from all over the world here in the US um, and, and feel supported and excel. So my pleasure to be here with you today. Let's uh, go ahead and uh, just kind of jump right in. So we already had this question. It was fantastic. So uh, where are we? Uh, so if you're just joining us, uh, you know, we are in New York State. So right on the eastern seaboard here. Um, but we are um, actually about five and a half hours from Manhattan and about three hours from Toronto. Um, an hour and a half or so from Buffalo, we have a lot of major cities around us, which is really exciting. So if you're, you have a long weekend or, you know, a, a winter break or fall break, you know, it's very accessible to go to Boston, uh, to go to DC and to see a lot of the areas around us. So we're the fourth largest city in New York state. So Rochester is not overwhelming <laughs> by any means, um, but it is a big enough city that there are just a wealth of opportunities here for our students, um, culturally, um, as well as, of course, internship and experiential learning opportunities as well. Uh, so it is a pretty cool uh, city and uh, we're happy to be a part of this. So this kind of hones in a little bit further so you can get a sense of where in the state we are. New York is a fairly large state, uh, especially when you see a little Rhode Island there. Um, <laughs> it's tiny, uh, but uh, you know, it's a, it's a really beautiful place to be. We have a lot of natural lakes. Um, we have uh, Niagara Falls is, is close. Um, and so a lot of really cool things to, to get uh, into while you're at Rochester. I like to show just, you know, while we're talking about like where we are just for a couple minutes, um, there's really nice aerial view. Um, of our main campus, uh, River Campus, which is home to all of our undergraduate students at Rochester for the most part. Um, this is sort of the, the main campus, the hub of, of Rochester and activity. Um, we are considered an urban campus um, just because we technically fall within the city limits of Rochester. But as you can see here, um, the city itself is actually a few kilometers north of us. Um, so still very accessible, but you are not in any uh, stretch of the imagination. You're not in the urban jungle, as it were, um, if 
anyone could ever say that about Rochester anyway. Um, so River Campus here tucked into the Genesee. Uh, this river flows directly to um, the Niagara region, uh, which was really exciting, and upwards here to Lake Ontario. We actually have five campuses at Rochester. So the River Campus, of course, I mentioned is the main one. Um, but we also have two campuses that are located in downtown Rochester. Um, and those would be our Eastman School of Music, which is a world famous uh, music conservatory, and also our Memorial Art Gallery um, called The Mag. It has thousands of pieces of amazing work. I was actually just there uh, last weekend for an event and got to see uh, three Monets with my own very own eyes, which I've never gotten to see a Monet before. So uh, very, very exciting. They get great stuff there. Um, and then if we were to shift our focus, um, I think I have another image here. Yeah, shifting our focus sort of to the right of the river campus. We have our medical center, which as you can see is sort of a juggernaut. It is <laughs> enormous. Um, we have five affiliated hospitals um, and of those, you know, some of them are, are quite old. We have the oldest optics program. Um, we have the, uh, which I'll talk about in a minute here. Um, we have the Flom Eye Institute, a cancer center, um, and just a whole host of research opportunities happening uh, on this campus as well. So it's just about a 20 minute walk from campus. Um, and uh, so that's one of our campuses as well. And I know we had a question about uh, BSMD programs. Um, and so we do have a BSMD program. Um, and this is basically where you'd be connecting to for, for that. Um, and so, yeah, we have a full medicine, uh, school of medicine, dentistry, nursing, um, you know, student study, veterinary sciences. I mean, you can do sort of any specializations that you're really looking for. Um, and then if we were to stretch our camera a little bit further, more to the right, would be our LLE, which is our laser, our, our laboratory for laser energetics. It's kind of a tongue twister. Our laser lab is the oldest um, in the country. We have the oldest optics program in the United States. Uh, if you don't really know what optics is, basically we have the most powerful laser found on a college campus. Um, and so it means really cool research. It also means that I've never stepped foot in the LLE because I'd probably trip and blow a hole through something and it would just wouldn't, wouldn't be great. So, um, but it is a really fantastic program and it's what put Rochester um, on the map as, as being referred to as optics capital of the world. So uh, that's very exciting as well. So that's where we are our different campuses, um, you know, all are interconnected by shuttle system, uh, very, very easy to get around uh, Rochester. We are also a very big bicycle friendly. Um, and recently there's been a, a big push for like scooters. So I've seen a lot of like electric scooters and things. Um, you know, a lot of folks are choosing to, uh, you know, alternate transportation over, you know, uh, cars with everything that's happening with the world. So really convenient place to be. So that's where we are. Uh, I just wanted to speak briefly about, you know, really who we are at our, at our core as an institution. Um, so this is our motto. If you've ever been to our website or you've seen us um, in any other virtual event, you'll see this word Meliora kind of um, sprinkled in a little bit everywhere. Uh, Meliora essentially means um, ever better out of Latin. It's a Latin term. And at our heart as an institution, we really firmly believe in making positive um, advancements and changes for humankind. Um, it sounds a little cliche. I totally aware that it does. <laughs> um, but, but really, it is very evident on campus. Um, you know, from the clubs and organizations that do philanthropical work to uh, the research that we're doing um, on any of our campuses, um, you know, and, and to being just good neighbors and good stewards uh, of humankind. Um, we really are looking for students that can help us achieve 
Meliora um, in making things better. So this is something we're looking for in our application. We'll talk about the application a little bit later, um, but essentially, you know, if you want to make a positive change, uh, you know, sometimes it doesn't mean that you're going to necessarily cure cancer. Um, I hope, I hope you do. That'd be great, uh, please. Um, but, uh, you know, it's also the little ripples, the little things that we do that, you know, catch on and become big impacts. Um, and that's really what Rochester is about. So that's a little bit about who we are. Um, I would like to talk, to focus a little bit before, you know, our Q&A after a while um, about some of the biggest points about why students choose to apply to Rochester um, and ultimately to work here. Um, so along with this really cool motto, we have um, three major areas that I'm gonna really talk about. One is our Rochester curriculum, which we'll go through first here, um, as well as our diverse student life and our research. So first and foremost, curriculum. Um, as you're looking at colleges and, and institutions in the United States, you're going to see um, some variations, of course, on, on curriculums and, and what institutions are offering uh, versus, you know, sort of the, the common sort of curriculum that many share. Um, and when I say common curriculum, I mean more of like the general education curriculum. Um, so a lot of institutions in the United States will require their students in the first two years to take a lot of sort of general classes in, in a lot of different areas. So you'll have, you know, one or two sciences, a couple of maths, uh, U.S. history, maybe psychology 101. These are all very typical. Um, however, at Rochester, we really believe that you should be studying and focusing on the things that you love to study. Um, and not necessarily worrying about those things that you're less excited about um, and, and don't maybe make a whole lot of, of sense for you to sort of continue studying unless you want to. Uh, so we have no general education requirements at Rochester. It truly is an open curriculum. I like to call it the choose your own adventure curriculum because typically no two students uh, from Rochester graduate with the same transcript because you are solely picking your courses. Um, we do still want you to be well-rounded, so I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, but, you know, essentially, if you were like me and math was not your friend and <laughs> you want to be uh, maybe in fashion or you want to be um, in, in business or, or some any other area outside of like math or very STEM-oriented fields, uh, you know, you don't have to take a bunch of math classes um, and, and be, you know, maybe not quite happy. Uh, same with my folks that are interested in um, things other than, you know, history or, or um, you know, English classes. Um, lots of different areas that you can explore on your own. So the way we set this up um, here is, uh, is like this. This is um, sort of a little blueprint for how the curriculum works at Rochester. So we have no required uh, subjects, although I will say a caveat to that is we have one course that is required for every student at Rochester. Uh, so it's inescapable, but it's still very manageable. It's just one writing class. Uh, we do uh, see the value of, you know, all students learning to write well. Maybe you already do. Um, this will just take you even further. Uh, so everyone will take this one writing course. Um, you typically take that your first year most, most often. Um, and in true Rochester style, since we are, you know, committing you to this course, uh, we offer it in over 40 different topics. So uh, if you're not a big fan of writing, I guarantee you can still find something that, uh, you know, one of the, the sections that um, has to do with an area of your interest. And so you'll be excited to write because you can do research on Harry Potter <laughs> or, you know, some of these other ones here. We have comics and culture. There are lang uh, language and cultural specific 
um, clusters. I remember there was one on whales, which was oddly like very popular. Um, so, hey, maybe you love marine life and you want to write about it. Um, so that is required of all students. Um, but then after that, it really is sort of an open book. Um, so you will choose your major or majors um, by the, ideally by the end of your sophomore year, your second year at Rochester. Um, and I say majors because 45% of our undergraduate students graduate with two degrees in four years because the curriculum is so flexible. Um, and our majors fall within the humanities, uh, the social sciences, and then the natural sciences and engineering uh, fields. So those are sort of the three, three areas. We are a liberal arts institution. So while we may have um, be incredibly well known in, in certain areas, um, especially within like natural sciences and engineering, um, our humanities and social sciences are really, really, truly fantastic uh, too. So, um, so those are where our majors lie. And then um, we do still want you to be a well-rounded individual, right? So where a lot of colleges and universities in the United States will, again, require those like general education courses, um, Rochester puts a different spin on that. Um, so for my folks out there um, that are interested, in maybe business, just for example, a business uh, degree is within the social sciences. So we would still want you to have, to dip your toe as it were in the humanities and in the natural sciences. So what we do is we require what we call a cluster. Um, so clusters are essentially three thematically linked courses. So if you study Russian in your spare time, I don't know, um, and you, you want to uh, you know, continue that in college, take three Russian courses. There's your cluster in humanities. Um, if you maybe are like me and you love music um, and you want to, but you're not necessarily a natural sciences kind of a person, um, you can take, um, there's a course on music cognition. Um, so how we think about music, what's the science behind, um, behind music? And that could knock out your natural sciences cluster. So these ultimately three courses that share a common theme. Um, so it sounds way more confusing than it actually is. So I'm going to actually show, um, I think I have another, oh, I don't, I lied, I'm so sorry. I Sometimes I have a slide that, that breaks it down even further, but um, so there are hundreds of clusters, hundreds, um, and we have a cluster generator actually right on our website. So if you're curious um, and you want to later take a look at you know, what would I take um, as a, maybe a humanities major? Um, what would I complete maybe my cluster in for social sciences and for natural sciences? Um, you can certainly do that um, because they're all listed there. You can create your own cluster, you just have to have it approved. Um, but uh, essentially, you know, it's that easy. Uh, you have a lot of flexibility, a lot of room to grow. Um, and so, that's essentially the, the rubric, the, the breakdown of the Rochester curriculum. So that in and of itself is probably the, the number one reason that I hear the most from students that apply to Rochester, um, because you know I've had students that love chemistry and want to do chemistry maybe for their career, um, but uh, also love music and, you know, want to study music at the same time and not sacrifice that. Um, or, you know, we have students that study a couple majors that are directly sort of related, you know, maybe economics and statistics, for example. Um, those work really well together. Um, so the sky is really the limit with this curriculum. So I hope that helps eliminate a bit. Um, I, it, that's a topic that tends to generate more questions than, than uh, you know, um, than I can possibly answer, but I am happy to tackle those too in a bit. So some numbers, I'm not gonna read these at you. Um, you know, essentially Rochester is a, a fairly small community. We're a medium-sized institution, but like on the 
small side of that scale. So uh, as you can see here, you know, a nice small student to faculty ratio. Um, I believe it's something like 77 or 75 or 77% of our class sizes are less than or fewer than 20 students. Um, so you might have a few larger classes your first year or so at Rochester, but those quickly get smaller as you progress um, into your disciplines. We are very big about study abroad. So I realize you'd already technically be studying abroad at Rochester, but you can study abroad further even. Um, I had a, a student work um, in my office that I employed uh, who was from Namibia and he actually did a semester of um, an internship abroad in London. And uh, he was a finance major and uh, did a finance internship, graduated uh, this past May, and they offered him a job. So he moved in August to the UK um, and he's just kind of a rock star. Um, but that, that happens pretty commonly um, at Rochester. Um, I already mentioned a lot of students have double majors, certainly nothing new, um, but uh, you know, you can, the sky's the limit. You can really make it what you want uh, that to be. We have two optional um, tuition-free fifth-year programs you can apply for. Um, the first is Take Five. This is uh, Take Five, not Need Five. So <laughs> you should still be, you know, you need to graduate with your degree or degrees within four years. Um, Take Five enables you to apply for a tuition-free fifth year in a area outside of your major. Um, so think about, you know, maybe in four years, you uh, finished all of your requirements, you graduate, you know, you're getting ready to graduate, um, but you found that you have a love for philosophy or um, a foreign language or, or something that you just didn't have maybe that extra time to devote to. Um, so take five is, is for that. Um, you know, you apply for it. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're approved, that's tuition free, fifth year to study whatever it is that you um, are passionate about outside of your discipline. The E5 is for entrepreneurial spirited students. Maybe you have a business idea that you wanna get off the ground. Um, you have these amazing ideas. Uh, let us help you get there. Um, we are known for our entrepreneurial opportunities at Rochester. Um, we have the AIN Center for Entrepreneurship. Um, we have um, office uh, for, for entrepreneurs as well. Uh, we have the iZone, which is like a kind of like a think tank space where a lot of our um, folks that, um, you know, have projects budding or uh, maybe even already up and running a little bit uh, gather and, and solve through problems together. Um, so that, again, is another tuition free fifth year. Moving along uh, to research. So we are a tier one research institution. Um, essentially what that means is we're doing research at the highest level that you can for an academic institution. Um, and so that's really exciting because if you are interested in research, uh, you are very, very, very likely to get to research your heart out <laughs> at Rochester. Um, and if you're not, into research, if that's just not something that at this point in time, or maybe ever, you think that you want to commit to, um, that's okay. It's not required. Um, but you can see here, almost 80% of our students take part in research while they're at Rochester. We have no caps or limits to what you can do and how much research you can conduct. Um, you could theoretically, you know, start into research your first year. On, on campus, if that is something that you have your heart set on, um, go for it, is, is basically the Rochester way of, of um, you know, supporting you. So we have an office for undergraduate research. We do publish uh, student research as well. So you may be selected to um, have your work published in our journal for undergraduate research, um, as well as, you know, present at conferences across the US and, sometimes in other countries as well. It's very friendly <laughs> to, to get into. And I'd like to challenge folks to not just think about research in terms of, uh, you know, 
people in white lab coats uh, mixing chemicals. Uh, like our, our young lady maybe here in the bottom right, you know, she's got her lab coat on, her safety goggles. Folks in all areas need research. So the humanities, um, the, the social sciences, I mean, everyone needs research in some form or another. Um, it's not always quantitative, sometimes it's qualitative. Uh, so I like to just challenge students to kind of think outside the box, find new areas and, and problems that we should solve um, and help us uh, get there. We will give you the support you need. Um, we have something it's called a research and innovation grant uh, or RIG or Rochester, which gives students um, funding specifically to put towards their research. Um, so we really want your help to, you know, solve world problems. Um, so this is something that we really truly put our heart behind as well um, at Rochester. And a lot of, um, we've made a lot of advancements. Uh, so we put out the uh, HPV vaccine, if you've heard of the Gardasil vaccine. Uh, we've been working on the COVID, uh, the Pfizer one, um, as well as, you know, our optics program, a lot of the smartphone tech, if you have a smartphone, a lot of that technology is tested in our optics. Um, lab, so with the with the Omega laser, so many things uh, going on. So uh, also something that is very uh, popular amongst reasons why students choose Rochester. Briefly, um, I want to uh, kind of keeping myself to time here, um, talk about our career center a little bit. Uh, so these folks are just amazing. Um, I don't know that I've ever seen such a comprehensive sort of career center um, at an institution. Um, not only are they preparing you for what's next, but they're helping you to do, um, to actively engage in your own development while you're in school. So, you know, the average student doesn't wait at Rochester until senior year and say, oh, I need to put my resume together. <laughs> I might need to do, you know, prepare, brush up for some interviews. Um, at Rochester, you're really, we're really encouraging you to work on these things while you're here um, so that you're less stressed at the end and you can just focus really on celebrating and, and you know, finding that job or, or getting into that graduate school you, you want to. Um, but uh, so they, they host so many events, uh, job fairs, um, you know, putting out internship opportunities for students and, and helping you locate those. Um, so much more uh, resume workshops. So this is really a resource that is just incredible for our students. And, and I, no matter where you go to uh, college or university, I think that this is something uh, students don't look into enough when, they, when they're looking. Um, you should definitely be considering um, you know, what the resources are for, for help um, outside of the classroom and, and getting you prepared for that next big step in your life. So that's our career center. Um, and lastly, you know, I want to talk about our, our student life, which is so vibrant. Um, that's part of my job <laughs> is to uh, bring that geographic, at least, uh, diversity, um, among other things. But uh, in Rochester, diversity isn't just where you're coming from, right? Um, so whether you're from Kingston or, you know, maybe you're from Bolivia and you're, you know, studying in, in Jamaica, we have students from all over the world uh, coming to Rochester, um, but also beyond the geographic diversity. Um, and we are diverse. We have a 29 or so percent international student population for all of our undergraduate students. So uh, nearly 30% of our students are international, uh, coming from over 120 countries, uh, truly diverse, um, but also religious diversity. You know, we have um, nine interfaith groups uh, represented. They all work very harmoniously together and support each other. Um, we also have socioeconomic diversity. We have plenty of students that are on full scholarship or partial scholarship. Um, and then we have students that, you know, have no financial need everywhere in between. Um, and then diversity of thought, you know, what you are unique, what makes you unique? This, these are things that we want to see in your application. So as I'm reading applications, you know, 
what makes you tick? What makes you get up in the morning? What, what excites you? Um, maybe what doesn't excite you? You know, what, what are the things that you're looking for? Because ultimately, you know, our students at Rochester don't fit into like one mold. Um, there is no like typical Rochester student per se, because we're so diverse. Um, and we do that on purpose. We want to bring everybody to the table, make sure that everyone's voices are heard. Um, it's very important and integral to who we are and what makes us so unique and special. So very much devoted to that. Um, you can see here a ton of student organizations, <laughs> uh, lots of sports, not just division three teams, but we also have intramural and club league uh, teams. Actually, I just found out recently um, a colleague of mine is the coach for the Ultimate Frisbee uh, girls women's team. And both the women's and the men's are going to nationals in, in California uh, this year. So that's pretty crazy. <laughs> um, so we have very competitive um, athletics as well. And because of the convenience of campus, you know, most students do choose to stay on all four years. Uh, so it's just a really lovely place. Um, I have some photos here of some organizations. I won't go through all of these. Um, big theater scene though here, uh, big music scene. Like I mentioned, uh, we have five different acapella groups. Uh, so if you were like me, you liked the movie Pitch Perfect, um, which I like more so because like I can't carry a tune to save my life. Um, and I, I like to think like the picture that I could, um, you know, our acapella, they're really fantastic and they compete nationally. Um, and there's just so much going on. There's no opportunity to be bored. Campus spaces, just amazing, beautiful places to go. Um, I like to read applications during this time of year in all sorts of different places on campus, just so I can, you know, be in a new environment. And, uh, and it's just very inspiring to see students, you know, um, studying and, and working together and, and doing what they need to do. Um, this, the iZone I mentioned earlier for our entrepreneurial students, but I mean, anybody is welcome to use the iZone. Is this bottom left photo. Um, so there are lots of little individual hub spaces where student groups can reserve um, and work together. They're private, they're noise canceling, um, so much to offer uh, there at iZone. Um, this, the bottom right is one of our dining halls, um, upper right, that's our um, interfaith chapel, which is of use to all of our um, different faith groups on campus, um, and uh, the periodical room in the top left, which reminds a lot of people of like Harry Potter. Um, I certainly get that kind of a vibe when I'm there. Um, but these are just a few places. Everybody has their own favorites. Um, and that goes to say for traditions as well. Um, like at most colleges and universities, Rochester has its own traditions. Um, we have a homecoming weekend that we call Meliora Weekend, uh, where we invite our alumni back and you can make connections. Um, we have Wilson Day, which is um, an introduction to our new students uh, to service and, and helping the community. Um, Winterfest, when we get that snow, we get really excited. We have lots of skiing and, <laughs> and fun things. I think this is like a snowman building competition of some sort uh, happening there, um, but a lot to experience um, as well. So that's really, you know, who, um, who we are, what we have to offer, what we're really known for at our core. Um, quickly, I just wanted to touch base uh, so we have plenty of time for questions on our application. We are a holistic review institution. So we are looking at absolutely everything in your application. Um, I am reading your essays. I am reading your recommendation letters. I am recalculating your GPA. <laughs> um, literally, taking, turning all the stones over uh, to make sure that you're a good fit for Rochester and we're a good fit for you. Um, so please do, if you're applying to Rochester, fill out the supplements, um, answer all the questions that you can, to be honest, answer everything that you possibly can. Um, we are test optional. So we truly mean that, uh, that in every sense. So if you apply test optional, we won't expect scores. 
and they will not hurt your application. It will not, I promise you. Um, you know, it just means that we're looking at other things more, you know, um, and then uh, demonstrated interest. You being here today, first of all, shows demonstrated interest. Um, but, uh, you know, I hope that you'll sign up for an interview. Highly encourage uh, students to interview always, whether it is a requirement or, you know, um, like at Rochester, purely a recommendation. We really, really, I can't say enough how helpful that can be in the admissions process for you if you interview with us. Um, so do do that. Um, and then scholarships and financial aid, I know we'll probably have some questions here. So I won't go too, too far in right away, but uh, we offer need-based aid and merit-based aid at Rochester. So we are very um, financially friendly uh, for our international students. Um, but that's really it. I wanted to sort of wrap up my little spiel um, because I, I want to be able to get to questions. So I'm just gonna cycle through the last couple of files while we start um, start maybe on some on some questions. Um, these are our application cycles. Um, and uh, as you can see, we already are past the deadline for early decision one. Uh, we do still have early decision two and regular open. Um, so yeah, with that, thank you so much again for having me. I'm going to, I'm really excited to answer any of your questions. So we'll go ahead and uh, get started with that. Okay, awesome. awesome. Thank you so much, Brett. Sure. Okay, so I have a follow-up question from our student who wants to do that joint bachelor's and MD program. Um, what is the duration of this program? It is eight years, it's four plus four. So our REMS program is, you know, four years undergraduate um, where you'd be studying whatever it is you want <laughs> and then four years uh, medical school. Okay. It's long, but rewarding years. And I, we need, we need, we need you. We need you. So please um, apply and do well and come back and make, make Jamaica proud. All right. Um, so please clarify if students must do courses from all three major areas for cluster requirement. Great. Yeah. So that's a great question. Um, yes, for most cases. So for students that are applying, um, or I'm sorry, are studying within humanities, social sciences, and most of the natural sciences, um, yes, you would be required to complete a cluster in the other two areas outside of your major. Now, if you're double majoring and maybe you have a, um, a natural science degree and you're going to have one in social sciences, then of course you only need to cluster in the humanities um, because that's more than enough that, you've, <laughs> that you're doing. Um, the only, uh, I guess the big caveat for that is uh, engineers. If you're interested in engineering, um, you have a heavier course load than most students. So, um, you know, we require only one cluster and then you can choose which area that's in. Okay, awesome stuff. All right, so follow-up questions from our doctor here. So does the BSMD program allow students to study in different portions of the world? Yeah, so there are, we do have some different um, abroad options for, you know, getting that um, clinical experience that, that um, you know, experience outside of just, you know, the classroom. Um, so I know that we had, um, I believe we've had programs in the past in like Nicaragua, um, among other places. So it is something that you certainly can uh, do a little bit of traveling still while you're, while you're studying. Okay. All right. All right. Um, does the University of Rochester accept um, CAPE exams as Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Examinations? We do. Mm -hmm. All right. That was easy. I know. <laughs> All right. Uh, next question. Do you offer online classes? We do. Um, now, the I guess with the pandemic, you know, we went through that phase where we had students that couldn't physically come to campus um, and, and we're studying online. So um, that is, uh, however, you know, we are really an, an on-ground focused institution. So most of our students, unless you have an extenuating circumstance, um, for the most part, you know, we are going to expect you to be on campus. Um, not to say that you can't still take an online class or two, um, but we are largely a residential campus. Okay, all right. 
Are there any special requirements for entry for engineering students? No, actually. So, um, and this is something I, I'm so glad that you asked this question because I didn't bring it up in my little spiel, but uh, Rochester, we admit all students is undecided ultimately. So um, you can put your preference on your application uh, for what you'd like to do if you, you know, already there and you, and you know, um, but ultimately we don't have any prereqs. Um, you know, we're hoping that if you're going into math that you've taken maybe calculus or, you know, biology, if you want to be a biology major, but uh, ultimately, you know, we're looking at everything holistically. Um, if you meet our rigor standards, then we are going to um, have full faith that you're going to be a rock star at whatever it is that you choose to do. All right. Awesome. So we have a doctor and an engineer in the house. Um, what, what are you guys, what are the rest of you guys interested in majoring in? Drop your questions in the chat, guys, and the Q&A. Sorry. Any humanities folks out there? Yes, we're my social scientists. <laughs> Our social sciences, yes. No, no econ majors. <laughs> right. Oh man, you never know with a mixed bag what you what you'll get. But uh... oh, we have one student who's interested in law. Okay. okay. All right. Great. Right. Uh, All right. You can definitely certainly study. You know, sort of like pre-law track courses. It's not a major at Rochester, um, but we have students that study history or. You know, I mean, any number of different areas um, while they prefer, prepare for the LSAT. So um, we don't have an, a law school um, at Rochester, um, but we have all the preparation <laughs> for it. Okay. All right. Do you do aeronautical engineering? Ooh. We do not right. do aeronautical <laughs> engineering. Yeah, that's kind of like very a really... Very smart students here. Yeah, that's a, that's a very, very um, uncommon engineering <laughs> at, at a lot of institutions. We do have eight different engineering disciplines, though. So I'm so sorry. That's just not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, can you enter the BSMD program with just CAPE subjects? Um, so, I mean, technically, yes. So, I mean, what we really like to see, though, um, because that is our most competitive program. Um, mm -hmm. So to give some context, you know, we uh, take about 10 students uh, into that program a year um, out of uh, probably a thousand or so that apply. So extremely, extremely competitive. Um, but I don't say that to scare you. Um, it just means that you want to build up, you want to make sure that while you're still in school, you're doing as much shadowing as you can in the medical field. You're doing experiential learning. You're challenging yourself. Maybe you're taking some dual enrollment courses or studying AP on your free time, <laughs> doing self-study. Um, we are looking for, um, you know, all of that, that kind of work, because again, it is just that competitive but I don't say that to scare you. And again, you can still study towards medicine um, and not get into the REMS program. Um, REMS is really gives an advantage in that um, you could go on to our medical school without having to take the MCAT. That's like one of the big, the big pulls for that program. Oh, that's a big advantage. <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay, so you can just skip the MCAT if you're already in the, the RIMS program. Right. Um, well, at least for Rochester, um, okay. if you want to apply for, you know, Johns Hopkins or, or wherever, um, they'll, they'll require it, right? But, uh, but our medical school would not. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions for Brett, guys, before we, I think we have time for maybe one or two more. And if anyone is interested in the REMS program, here it is right here. I've dropped the link, just drop the link in the chat. And I'm also going to drop my email here in the chat. So um, feel free go. to also reach out to me. I'm, I'm always happy to, <laughs> to connect and answer questions. Awesome stuff. All right. So any other questions, guys, going once, going twice? No questions. So everyone knows what to do. We know exactly how to apply. Two. Okay, we have one more. <laughs> Tell us about boarding at Rochester and the cost of study. Okay. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, most students um, 
actually stay on campus all four years, like I mentioned, um, because it's of the convenience. So boarding, um, you know, our residence halls are really nice. Uh, even the traditional kind of first year uh, halls that most students stay in um, tend to be like really popular um, because they're a little bit bigger than the standard um, size uh, that you would find on campuses, um, but also just the location, everything is really convenient. We have apartment and suite style living options, especially as you progress uh, in your time at, at the university. Um, fee structure is right on our website. So um, we are you know, transparent about our, our costs for tuition, expenses, um, all of that. Um, so you can find that online. Um, and, and I would just like to mention too, when looking at you know, fee structure at, at institutions, take into account to the value of the education um, that you are getting. Um, and then also what those institutions have to offer for financial aid, um, because it can seem like, oh my gosh, this, this number, like, and it's terrifying. Um, but that's not to say that it is, it is some unattainable um, goal. Okay, thank you for that. We have an astronomy hopeful here. I just shared the program um, outline for the Department of Physics and Astronomy. So yes. you, can, you can check that out, my friend. And yet, so the answer is yes, they do have an astronomy program. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we sure do. All right. So last question, guys, and then we have to wrap up. And just remember, join, join all our webinars at the link in the chat, that docs.google, very long. I'll find it again and send to you. Um, so ask any final questions for Brett before we sign off, please. All right, we have one more. All right, do you offer student loans? Okay. Uh, yeah, so um, part of the our need based financial aid could consider loans. That could, that, that is uh, certainly, uh, something that some students um, are are good with and, and ask for. All right. Well, there you have it, guys. So, Brett, thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you to our audience. Um, you asked very insightful, very, very helpful questions. And so join us um, for our next webinar. It starts in five, six minutes um, with FIU. All right. So thank you Brett, so much. Thank you again. All right. Take care, take my care. friend. Bye-bye. <laughs>